The Last of Us, or Tolou, as I've often seen it abbreviated online, is the newest hit prestige drama from HBO based on the video game of the same name. If your feeds are anything like mine, everyone's talking about how good they think the show is, or how sexy they think Pedro Pascal is, or they're reposting the one weird clip of Family Guy over and over again with no context, but that might be completely irrelevant. The reception to the show has been interesting to me, since video game adaptations into film and TV show were often me at best, often relying on the nostalgia or recognition of the brand to get people invested rather than being a good thing. So it sort of begs the question, what if you don't have the nostalgia, nor the recognition of the brand? I have never owned a PlayStation in my life. When I was young, my parents bought me a Nintendo Wii because it's the healthy one, and my younger brother bought an Xbox One so he could play Assassin's Creed a game which he did not realize was not a console exclusive. As such, I have never played The Last of Us. The only thing I know about the franchise is that Ellie was voiced by that one actor from Critical Role whose name I can never remember off the top of my head. It's not Laura Bailey, I'm like 80% sure that's correct. So, having never played The Last of Us, The Last of Us 2, The Last of Us 1.2, The Two Last of Us, or The Last of Us 1.2, do I think the show is worth watching? Yeah. Dancing, walking, rearranging furniture. Okay, but for real though, I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but here's my take. First off, as a disclaimer, I am going to tell you that my favorite movie of all time is Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, so if you think my opinion is incorrect, yeah. Additionally, since not all the episodes are out at time of recording, I have only watched the first episode, but having only watched that one episode, I can say that I am hooked and I do want to see more. So far, the drama is gripping, the main characters have been compelling with the little introduction they've been given, and I say all that having no nostalgia for them as characters, nor for Pedro Pascal as an actor. I completely forgot he was the Mandalorian because he's wearing a big hat half the time, and outside of that, I just haven't seen anything he's done. Characters aside, the show also does a great job of introducing its own brand of apocalyptia. Something with a lot of disaster or apocalypse series is tend to not be so great at. When you're engaging with post-apocalyptic stories, you as the viewer, you you know the world is going to end. Hell, the fucking poster for the show is literally Joel and Ellie standing before a ruined city overgrown with plant life and like 20 fucking years of decay. Nobody's working nine to five anymore. And sure, there are points in the introductory chapter where the characters say things like, Mrs. Mapleberry, you're eating the beloved family dog. What's gotten into you? But like you as the viewer, you're, you've read the synopsis, you've seen the trailer, like you know a fucking zombie apocalypse is gonna happen. Like that's, that's not a surprise. But even despite knowing what you're getting into from the get-go, the show does an excellent job of setting up tension and fleshing out the main characters even before the world turns to shit. And even when the world eventually does turn to shit, that ride towards that destination is still gripping all the way up until its collapse. Maybe that was a blessing of not having seen the franchise before. Anytime a character was introduced, I had no idea if they were important, whether they were from the source material, whether they were gonna die or be important later, or even how they would react to this weird fungal apocalypse they found themselves in. Perhaps, after all, ignorance really is bliss. And I will say that even knowing, yes, an apocalypse is gonna happen and we're gonna jump like 10, 20, 30 years in the future where everybody's lawless and like everything's fucked, like I still enjoyed the ride up until that point. I still found myself enthralled with the thrills and even genuinely emotional at times, even knowing vaguely what the end result of the first chapter was gonna be. That's probably the best compliment I can give to the show so far. Also, I will say at one point, and again, no spoilers, but two characters get separated behind an immovable obstacle, and one goes like, You get to the place we need to be, I'll find another way around! And at that point, I was like, yes, this show is definitely based on a AAA video game. Now, the show's not perfect. The show throws a bunch of characters at you all at once, which, for someone who hasn't played the games before, did seem a little bit confusing. You know how vaguely everybody fits into the social hierarchy of the world that the show builds, but they're only ever mentioned by name, like, once each, so there was a couple times times where I found myself going, wait, who are you again? What's, what was your deal? There were also some key plot points which, in my opinion, 
were brushed over a little bit too quickly that may have been better introduced at the start of Episode 2. However, at this point, I'm still going to go and watch Episode 2, so at the end of the day, they can't really matter all that much. So, at the end of the day, as someone who's never played the games, I would still recommend this show. But who would I recommend it to? The show is, at its core, a heavy post-apocalyptic drama. Like, it's heavy, it's real, and while I'm sure that there's moments of levity to be had, the first episode doesn't really set a precedent for lightheartedness. This may be a turn-off for some, but for other people it may be exactly what they're looking for. Like, I simply cannot imagine a scene where Joel is staring directly at the camera and goes, They're right behind me, aren't they? And like 20 clickers come out, like, blah, 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 like I, that's it's not gonna be that fucking show. The show also doesn't shy away from some pretty brutal imagery. Whilst the blood and gore isn't really like in your face or over the top, like Mortal Kombat, the precedent they set for dramatized deaths could be pretty confronting for some. Definitely, if there's certain kinds of on screen deaths that you can't handle, I would definitely recommend looking up some content warnings before going to check out the show. Again, I don't want to get into spoilers, but there may be one or two that certain people might find a little bit confronting. And just make sure that if you are searching up for content warnings that you are searching it up for The Last of Us The Show, not The Last of Us The Game, because they're two different things and it's confusing. But if you're looking for a post-apocalyptic prestige drama that earns its adult ratings without going completely overboard, in the first episode at least, then Tolo is definitely well worth your time. No experience necessary. And I mean, who knows, it could all turn to shit in episode two, but we can find that out together. So that is my take on The Last of Us, having no experience on it whatsoever. Officially, I am a YouTuberman. If you are a fan of The Last of Us and you have feelings on the show so far, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts of it in the comments below, so do that. If you enjoyed that weird one-off comment I made about Critical Role earlier in the video, you can check out my other videos, which have a lot of Dungeons and Dragons homebrew and content, which is completely different from this, so... But anyway, at the end of the day, feel free to subscribe, like, leave a comment down below, follow me on other social media, and... Yeah.